One of the most amazing coincidences in American presidential history is this. John Adams, the second president, and Thomas Jefferson, the third president, the only two presidents to sign the Declaration of Independence, both died on the same day, July 4th, 1826, the 50th anniversary of that independence. But like many presidential stories, there is a twist. I'm Bob Summers, and this is a presidential story. A friendship first formed between John Adams and Thomas Jefferson when they were two members of the Committee of Five, tasked with drafting the Declaration of Independence for the Second Continental Congress. Although their ideas were different, they both had great admiration and respect for each other. As their paths continued to cross, their differing ideas strained their friendship. Under the presidency of George Washington, Adams was vice president and Jefferson was secretary of state. The two would argue about the role of government. Adams believed in a strong centralized government and Jefferson deferred to states' rights. When Washington decided to not seek a third term in 1796, it created a power vacuum. And to Washington's great disappointment, political parties. Adams of the Federalist Party defeated Jefferson of the Democratic-Republican Party by only three electoral votes. According to the rules of the time, by coming in second, Jefferson became the vice president under Adams. Can you imagine that today? Well, it didn't go any better over 200 years ago either. As VP, Jefferson was horrified by the Restrictive and Unconstitutional Alien and Seditions Act of 1798. For Jefferson, this abuse of presidential power was the last straw. He left Adams and left Washington, D.C., returning to his estate, Monticello, in Charlottesville, Virginia. There he began to plot how he would bring his party to power in the election of 1800. The contentious, bitter election of 1800 had both sides using the press to attack the other. The Adams camp called Jefferson, quote, a mean-spirited, low-lived fellow, while the Jefferson camp called Adams a, quote, hideous, hermaphroditical character. Jefferson won by eight electoral votes. Luckily, Adams did not need to serve as Jefferson's vice president, but that's another story. Adams was so angry and upset that he became the first president not to attend the inauguration of his successor, and the two did not speak again for 12 years. Have you ever seen the TV episode where the friends or family of two quarreling friends tell them that the other wants to apologize? Well, apparently that's not a new idea. Benjamin Rush, a founding father and fellow signer of the Declaration of Independence, did just that. Wanting to reunite these two statesmen, Rush wrote to both men, telling each that the other wanted to rekindle their friendship. Rush sealed the deal by telling them he had a dream in which they revitalized their friendship through letter writing before they later, quote, sunk into the grave nearly at the same time, full of years and rich in the gratitude and praises of their country. Well, I'd say he nailed it. Adams was the first to reach out when he sent a letter dated January 1st, 1812, to Jefferson wishing him a happy new year. Jefferson responded with a letter reminiscing of their common fight for independence. Over their last 14 years, Adams and Jefferson wrote more than 150 letters to each other, clearing the air and renewing their friendship. As the country approached the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, 90-year-old Adams who held the record as the oldest president until Ronald Reagan in 2001, and 83-year-old Jefferson were both very sick. At Monticello, Jefferson had been in and out of consciousness for two days, when he finally died at 12.50 p.m. At Peacefield, Adams' home in Quincy, Massachusetts, at about 1 p.m. on that same day, knowing that he would pass away soon, a bedridden Adams uttered his last words. Jefferson survives. At 6.20 that evening, Adams also passed away. Why did Adams say this? Did it come from a place of spite and bitterness? Or a place of love and camaraderie? We will never know. Just like we won't truly know what his last words were. What? Yeah, apparently there are different versions of Adams' last words, all with similar meanings. Jefferson survives. Jefferson still survives. Thomas Jefferson still survives. 
and Jefferson still lives. So where did this come from? Less than one month after Adams' death, Massachusetts Congressman Edward Everett was the first eulogist to share Adams' last words as Jefferson still lives. Nine days later, Salem, Massachusetts postmaster Joseph Sprague was the second to share the last words as Jefferson survives. In 1827, Washington, D.C. Judge William Crank repeated the last words in the first Adams posthumous biography. And so it continued, including in David McCullough's biography of John Adams, which won the 2002 Pulitzer Prize for Biography. At the time of the 50th anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, the president was Adams' own son, John Quincy Adams. When John Quincy heard his father was not well, he immediately returned to Peacefield. But he arrived on July 17th, much too late. John Quincy learned about his father's final days and wrote about them in his diary on July 21st. In it, he wrote, About one afternoon, he said, Thomas Jefferson survives. But the last word was indistinctly and imperfectly uttered. He spoke no more. This second-hand account is confirmed by the only person present when Adams last spoke, Louisa Adams, the 53-year-old niece and adopted daughter of Abigail, his wife. She told Boston's mayor that the last words she distinctly heard was the name Thomas Jefferson. The rest was inarticulate and she could not catch the meaning. But the link between the two men and the coincidence of their passing within hours of each other led the people of the day to fill in the blanks to create a narrative that exaggerated their historical and emotional connection. And to add to the coincidence, James Monroe, the fifth president, also died on July 4th, just five years later. Of the first five presidents, three of them died on July 4th, the anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please help out the channel, like and subscribe. And please visit post.com to learn more interesting facts about the presidents.